So I, I am so thankful to be able to um, introduce Brother Bill to you this morning. And uh, hey, ever since I was a little kid, I've always have been familiar uh, with the Gideon ministry. And uh, it's always been something that um, I knew about and uh, sitting in church and uh, Gideon volunteers would come and share with us about what they are doing. Um, I've seen, um, you know, uh, right after the fall of the communism in Russia, United, uh, the Soviet Union, and uh, as they were beginning to divide uh, up those, all those different countries, uh, I had the privilege of going to the country of Moldova. And, um, and one of the very first things that I saw, I mean, like day one, that they were so thankful for was a room that was filled with Bibles. And I've never seen people so hungry for the Word of God as I saw, saw there. And when we broke out a case of Bibles, I mean, people would just about storm, storm the gates and because uh, how precious the Word of God is uh, to them. I'm very excited to, to introduce Brother Bill Walters to you this morning because um, I got to see him and his men in action when I was the chaplain at Trousdale Turner. And um, so um, we always had handy Gideon Bibles the whole time, but, uh, but several times uh, I got to take them out and we went door to door, cell to cell, and um, we, we, we passed out by about 500, was it five? I bet you know the number exactly, don't you? I bet you're going to share that with us here. Just say, all right. And, um, but to see the love that these men had for the Word of God. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, Brother Tom usually comes and shares here at Amazing Grace. And, I mean, we almost had a little fight over whether or not we was going to have to wait on him and our brother Bill come, but I, I just I wanted him, brother Bill, to come. He has been a leader down there, and um, and at the end of the service, there's a plate on the corner there. Every dollar that goes in that plate is going to the Gideon Ministry. Okay, all right. So if you have a check today that you want to write, just go ahead and just write it out to them and uh, put it in that plate. Or if you brought some cash today, but we want him to leave with a gift. I promise you. It would be one of the. It would be money well spent because yeah. the money doesn't go to these guys whatsoever. It puts the word of God into the hands of people all around the world, Amen. and we all know that the word of God does not go forth void. That's it right. will accomplish. Yeah. It will do some amazing th stuff because in that word is the gospel that's right of jesus christ that's right and the bible says that the gospel is the power unto salvation okay yes. all right and and so so uh you just it's a great investment yeah. and i hope that you join me and brother bill you come and just Amen. share with us Amen. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Very similar to what it says on the front of your bulletin there today. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But God, how can I do that? Lord, oh Lord, you know I don't have the education to do that. <laughs> Lord, oh Lord, you know I don't have the money to do that. Lord, Lord, you know I don't have the power to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. A very fine, dedicated Christian young couple took serious that command of the Lord. And there was a high school senior that lived just two houses down the street. And to celebrate his upcoming graduation from high school, they invited him to their home for a cookout. Well, Miss Beverly, it came the day for them to have the cookout. He walked down the street two houses. He knocked on that door, and they welcomed him into the home. He was so shocked because he was the only guest that had been invited to this cookout. Well, this dear lady, Rita, had done a wonderful job cleaning the house, preparing the meal, getting everything all perfectly set for this guest who was coming. They had a wonderful, wonderful meal. And after the meal, they settled down in the living room and began to talk. 
just so happens that this man and his wife were members of the Gideons International. And they were very concerned about this young man getting ready to graduate from high school and going off to study at the university. And so they took this opportunity to celebrate his graduation coming up from high school, but also the opportunity to witness to him and tell him about Jesus. They took a copy of the Word of God, very similar to this one. In the front, they had already written his name. There were several verses of Scripture that they referenced there inside the front cover. And as they would thumb through, there were several verses that they had put an asterisk beside of and some underlined. And then they came to the back, and there we have a little summary of God's love letter. You know, God loves us so much he wrote us a love letter. Yes. Well, there's a little summary there in two pages of the love letter. Now, you know, when my wife and I were dating back in the 70s, we didn't have these cell phones, you know, and it was long distance to call because we lived a little few miles away from each other. And, Miss Debbie, we didn't make too many long-distance telephone calls because they were pretty expensive. So instead of making long-distance telephone calls, Sherry, what did we do? We wrote love letters. We wrote love, love letters. Really? We honestly wrote love letters. I wrote good ones. <laughs> I wrote good ones, huh? Well, now, what if I had taken... One of those few times, and I called my girlfriend and on the phone and paid for a long distance call, and I asked her, Honey, did you receive my love letter? Well, yeah, I got it, but I just hadn't read it yet. My, do you think we'd be married 52 years later? <laughs> no way. Or if, if she wrote me a letter and I called her on the phone, she said, Honey, did you get my letter? Yeah, but I just hadn't read it yet. Why, my goodness, we wouldn't be married at all, would we? Well, you see, God's done the same thing. He's wrote us a love letter. And what does he intend us to do with it? He intends us to read it. So that night, that young couple, they encouraged this high school senior in the back of that New Testament to read the last two pages, the summary of God's love letter, before he went to bed that night. They showed him in the front. There's a place where you have easy reference to find help in time of need. There's the scripture passage. There's the problem, the scripture passage, and the page number. Many, many, many of life's problems, most people would have no idea where to turn to in the Bible to read what God says about answering our problems. So in this little Gideon New Testament, there's an easy reference. Anybody who's totally unfamiliar with the Word of God through that little easy reference can find help for their problems. So this couple showed those helps to the young high school senior. Well, that night, as they went through the plan of salvation in the back, that young man did not make a decision to trust Christ, but they gave him that New Testament. John, he gladly received it. He took it home with him. He graduated from high school. In the fall, he went off to study at the university. Guess what he took with him? He took the Word of God. And for the really first time in his life, he knew there was something missing in his life. He knew it had to do with this God. It had to do with this Jesus. And he knew, David, he could find the answer to that question in that New Testament. Amen. And for the first time in his life, he began to read the Word of God. Um, fast forward four years, the day after he graduated from the university, went to visit his girlfriend. As he drove up in their driveway, they were getting ready to go somewhere. Where are you going? We're going to a crusade. Could he go with them? Why, sure. They drove downtown to the football stadium where the crusade was to be held. The beautiful singing, the evangelist preached, and there sitting there, his future wife, his future mother-in-law, his future two sister-in-laws, and God was dealing directly with his heart through the singing and the message there at that crusade. Amen. And God 
led him down across those bleachers onto that football field, and there he got on his knees, Sharon, and he asked Jesus to forgive his sins, yeah. to take every sin away, yeah. cast it as far as the east is from the west, Amen. never ever to be remembered again. Amen. He got up off of that football field, a brand new person. He had a new heart. He was a new creature. He had a love, a love for people he had never had before. And his life was totally changed, Brother Harold, because Jesus paid the sin debt on Calvary's cross, shed his blood that every person could have eternal life through that precious shed blood of Jesus. All because of a fine, dedicated young Christian couple who happened to be members of the Gideons International, who had a burden on their heart for a high school senior graduating, getting ready to leave home for the very first time. They witnessed to him, gave him a copy of the Word of God that changed his life forever. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. Now, you may ask, how do you know? Eric, you may ask back there in the back. How do you know? How do you know that that's a true testimony? I've got that New Testament right here. I have to be very careful with it. This New Testament, it says in the front, presented, congratulations on graduation, presented to Bill Walters from Gene and Ed Lewis, May, my eyes are failing me, <laughs> May the 17th, 1967. And in the back of that New Testament, 1971, my decision to receive Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And I sign my name right there. Amen. And my life completely totally changed a dollar a dollar and 53 cent investment a Gideon and his wife paid for this testament and this blue one happens to be the auxiliary his wife bought this one the burgundy is the one we Gideons buy and we use in our personal daily witnessing and as we have opportunity to meet someone to witness to them we don't just walk away we give them the word of God, claiming God's promise, Amen. Isaiah 55, 11, it shall not return unto me void. Yes, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is the command for each and every one of you here today who profess the name of Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And there's people right across the road, right down the street, people you work with, people you go to school with that don't know Jesus. And we have been encouraged to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Journey with me down the highway. We'll get down here on Highway 109. We'll go on Interstate 40. We'll go into downtown and getting into Nashville on Murfreesboro Road. There is a hotel called the Mercury Inn. It's a cheap hotel. Matter of fact, I hadn't been there lately and it may not even be there now. We received a letter written to the Gideons International and it said this, I am a truck driver from Rogersville, Tennessee. I travel three times a week from Rogersville, Tennessee to Nashville delivering my products. As of my custom, I spend the night at the Mercury Inn Motel on Murfreesboro Road. One night, I could not sleep. He said, I picked up the Bible next to the bed in that cheap hotel room. And as I opened it up, I read these words. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
And Albert Mitchell said, like an arrow, the word of God pierced his heart, got on his knees next to that bed in that cheap hotel room, confessed he was a sinner, trusted Jesus that night as his Lord and Savior, and when he got to check out at the desk the next day, he stole the Bible from the hotel. Well, he had no Bible. In this letter, he confessed. <laughs> he felt guilty two weeks later. He confessed. He told us that testimony. He confessed that he stole the Bible. And in the letter was a check, read it for $50. I want to pay for that Bible, and I want to pay for more Bibles to be placed and distributed around the world free of charge. About two years later, Brother Harold, we contacted Albert Mitchell and asked him how he was doing. He had been ordained as a deacon of the church. His wife and two children all had become Christians because of a $5 investment of a Bible placed in a cheap hotel room on Murfreesboro Road in Nashville, Tennessee. Go ye into all the world and preach the God. Who would have ever thought? Who do you put a Bible in a hotel room? A 24-hour a day, 365-day witness for everyone who comes in that hotel room for $5. Let's journey. Go ye into all the world. Let's take a flight from Nashville International Airport. We'll fly down to Miami, Florida. We'll make a connecting flight, and we'll fly across the Caribbean there, and we'll land in Caracas, Venezuela. Caracas. The runway is right there on just almost water level, just a little higher than the ocean. And you have to go up a steep, steep, pretty hill, big mountain to get into downtown Caracas. We've got an appointment downtown Caracas, and so we get a taxi. We're going up this high, steep mountain in the taxi, and all of a sudden, here comes racing past us an ambulance. And the light on top is flashing. The siren is loud and it's shrill. It hurts our ears. And obviously, there is somebody... Brother Beaver, there's somebody in the ambulance that's in bad trouble. And I don't know about you, but whenever I have this situation and I run upon an ambulance or something, I try to think, God, somebody's in trouble. They need my prayer. And I try to offer a quick prayer for them. Amen. That God would intervene in their lives. Well, we find out that in this ambulance is Colonel Raphael, the colonel of the Venezuelan National Army. They get to the hospital and as he's there in the hospital <clears throat> waiting for them to begin their process, whatever they're going to do, he finds a copy of the Word of God beside his bed. It's a Spanish-English New Testament. One column has the English, and right beside of it is the same verses of Scripture in the Spanish. He picks it up, and he looks in the very front, and in the front it's got that easy reference to find help in time of need. One page is the Spanish, and the next page is the English. And so he looks at it, and he begins to help in time of need. The way of salvation, John 3, 3, page 169. John 3, 16, Romans 10, 9 that I just read. Peace in time of anxiety, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, John 14. Courage in time of fear. And he began to read and turn to those pages and read what the Word of God said. Well, they did a test, and they found out that Colonel Raphael had a brain tumor. Brain tumor, and he had to have surgery or he would die. As he continued to read the Word of God in his hospital bed, he got the courage to have that surgery. They did the surgery. They removed the tumor from his brain. He recovered there in the hospital. And as he continued to recover, he continued to read the Word of God. When he got well enough to go home, he stole the Bible from the hospital. He didn't know another Christian he began to read the Word of God faithfully, not knowing a pastor, not knowing another Christian, not being a part of any kind of a church. Colonel Raphael trusted Jesus as his Lord and Savior simply through reading the Word of God. 
He found a pastor. He found a church. He told the pastor the decision he had made to trust Christ. And it tr Christ had become his Savior and his Lord. The pastor began to mentor him and share with him, you need to be baptized. You need to have a church home. You need to become a member of the church. Colonel Raphael was baptized, became a member of an evangelical Protestant church. I happened to meet him when I was in Venezuela for their National Gideon Conference some years ago. Colonel Raphael showed me a picture where they did brain surgery. He had that scalp cut all the way back through there. Shaved head. Showed me a picture of that surgery. I also noticed that Colonel Raphael had a Gideon emblem on his coat lapel like mine. Somebody asked him to become a Gideon after he came to know Jesus. Colonel Raphael was used to open the door for the Gideons in Venezuela to distribute a Spanish New Testament to every single military soldier throughout all of the country of Venezuela. And we claim God's promise. His word is not going to return unto him void. Let's journey. Let's go across the Atlantic Ocean. Anybody know where Senegal is? Senegal. Country? It's a country. All right, let's go to Senegal since nobody knows where it is. I'm going to draw a map up here. I'm going to draw a map right here. If this is the United States right here, Canada, South America, come over here across the Atlantic and we come over here to Europe up here and Africa right here. You know, Africa comes out, has a big hump like this, then it comes down like this. Everybody see Africa? You can see it there, right? All right, you see that big hump over here? It points over towards uh, South America and North America. Right here on this point right here, there's a little small country right there. It's called Senegal. Senegal. And it's 94% Muslim. We have the Gideons organized there, and they speak French in that country. I had an opportunity to represent you and your church because of your prayers and support of the Gideons and went there to Senegal. And uh, I was visiting, we had eight groups of volunteer Gideons in this 94% Muslim country. And I was visiting the eight groups of Gideons, giving them encouragement. We were going out and distributing the Word of God into the schools and places. And uh, I had a meeting with the group of Gideons in the town of Chess, Senegal. Chess, Senegal. And we had a meeting in the church. And as we were having a meeting there, I asked them, have any of you any testimonies of any of those who have been converted came to Christ through the Gideon ministry within the country of Senegal. And the Gideon smiled and they jumped, yes, yes. And they told me this testimony. Adama. Adama was a uh, student in school who had an older brother who was attending the University of Senegal and studying. The Gideons went to the University of Senegal and distributed French Testaments to the university students. Well, uh, Adam had an older brother who received one. But being Muslim, he knew his parents would not want him to have the Christian holy book. So in order for him not to get in trouble, he kindly slipped it behind himself and gave it to his younger brother, Adam. Well, Adam had this pretty, it was a dark blue book, he had this pretty little book, and he fell in love with it. And he began to read. Never seen a Bible before. Began to read the Bible. Began to fall in love with the Word of God. Continued to read the New Testament. Began to take correspondence courses on the Bible to learn more about the Bible. Adam came to Christ simply through reading a French New Testament and Car Senegal. The Gideons there at the meeting where I was there, and they were telling me about that, they told me, said, Adam not only came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior, he is the pastor of our church. Amen. The Central Bible Church in Chess, Senegal. He's the pastor. And they said, not only that, he is the director, the administrator of the only Christian seminary in the whole country of Senegal, teaching young people how to be pastors, how to be meter, uh, leaders of music, how to be church youth leaders. Adama, Chess, 
sin of all. To God be the glory. Amen. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. In a country like in a, in a country like the United States, supposedly a Christian country. In a country like Venezuela, a primarily Catholic country. In a country like Senegal, a 94% Muslim country. Let's go to another country in Africa. This is a blessing. Inside your bulletin, you have an insert. You might look on that and, and, and see that. that. That's a very close picture of what I'm getting ready to share with you. This, this picture on this, I don't, I don't think I took that picture. I could have. I, I've had this experience right here hundreds of times because God has given me the privilege to travel the world on your behalf and go to hundreds of schools distributing free copies of the Word of God. So this could very easily almost be the picture that I'm getting ready to tell you the story. I went to Kenya, Africa. On behalf of your church, I've been there eight times. Eight times is my really my second home, Kevin. It's my second home from here in the USA. First time I ever went to Kenya, a pastor told me, Kenya is a place that you can stop somebody on the street and begin to talk to them and witness to them. And before you finish, there's a whole crowd of people gathered around. And where you were talking to one or two, maybe witness to them and lead them to the Lord, you know, you might have eight or ten that comes to Christ before you finish sharing with them. Well, I was a part of a team of 27 Gideons men who paid their own way to go to Kenya, Africa for two weeks. And in that period of two weeks, representing you and the churches in Hartswell and in uh, Wilson County that we represent, in that period of two weeks, we went to 434 schools. There was no red tape. You know, we can't go to the schools in Wilson County anymore. The schools in Wilson County are closed to the Gideons coming and distributing the Red Testaments to the fifth graders. We can no longer do that. But all throughout Africa, it's a complete wide open door. Most all of South America, a complete wide open door. So we went to 434 schools in two weeks, David. The first school that I went to, we went up to the headmaster's office and um, we showed the headmaster. We've got a full Bible like this for your desk here in the principal's office. We've got a full Bible. So if anybody needs to use a full Bible, borrow a full Bible, you got one right here on your desk that you can loan them. But in addition to that, we have a Swahili New Testament or we have an English New Testament for every single one of your teachers and every single one of your students. And we would like to have an opportunity to speak to them briefly and to distribute. There was absolutely no red tape. There was no problem. In that headmaster's office, there was a, a, a cable that came down through the ceiling in his office. And he reached over and he grabbed hold of that cable and that was a bell. And he rung the bell, and that meant it was time for an assembly. So as you looked out the windows of the office, kids came running from every direction. I mean, they came out of the boonies. They came off of the playground. They came out of the classrooms. They came running from everywhere because it was time for an assembly. And the headmaster says, tell them who you are, the Gideons. Tell them why you came. Preach Jesus to them. Amen. We made a little platform of the cases of New Testaments. And for about 20 minutes, Rita, I had the opportunity to preach Jesus. I shared briefly my testimony like I shared with you this morning. I told them how they could come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I went through the love letter summary in the back of the New Testament, a simple plan of salvation there. We gave out the New Testaments. 
all the teachers were lined up over here against the wall and against the, they were outside, but all the teachers were lined up over here. We went down, we gave every single teacher a New Testament. And then we went to those beautiful straight, straight lines. These kids were all in their beautiful uniforms, white and blue uniforms. Very well behaved, no discipline problem whatsoever. And we went row by row and gave every one of those 400 students a copy of the Word of God. Amen. Not a single one refused. Even some Muslim students received the Word of God. <coughs> when we finished the distribution, I asked them, after I had shared with them how they could come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now, I can't tell you how many of these were true professions of faith. That's, that's up to God to know. That's between that kid and, and God. I can just tell you that I was doing there, sharing Jesus with them, the love story, and offer them the opportunity if they wanted to come to know Christ. And I asked them, if you've never trusted Jesus in your, in your life as your personal Lord and Savior, never trusted him before, if you would like to, I want to lead you, and I'll pray a f sentence, you repeat. I'll pray a sentence, you repeat. I led them in a sinner's prayer. One phrase at a time, they repeated, they repeated. And then I asked them afterwards, if for the very first time in your life you just trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you sincerely, truly, honestly, as best you know how, meant it in your heart, you ask Jesus to forgive your sins and ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. If you made that your prayer today, and again, I can't tell you how serious and truthful that was. I was just there telling them about Jesus. I asked them to take their New Testament if they had just prayed that prayer and raised their hand, holding the New Testament. And I took a picture. There was about maybe 300, I would estimate, of those 400 students who raised their hand Amen. with their New Testament, professing publicly that they just trusted Jesus yeah. as the Lord and Savior. We as Gideons have an opportunity like that all over the world, not much at all in the United States anymore, but all over the world, yeah. to give out the Word of God. Claiming God's promise, what? Isaiah 55, 11, shall not return unto me void. To God be the glory. Brother Beaver mentioned about the Iron Curtain countries. In 1989, July, the Gideons International had a concentrated effort of prayer for their Iron Curtain countries. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. For 40 years, and for many of those Iron Curtain countries, 70 years they had been totally denied the Word of God. You could not have a copy of the Word of God. People need the Lord. We prayed. We prayed. God opened the door. God opened the doors. God opened the doors. And a miraculous answer to the prayer. In July, and that was in July. In September, God began to do an amazing thing. On September 19th of 1989, God opened the very first door to the Gideon ministry in the country of Poland. The Gideons organized a group of Gideons, volunteers, in Warsaw, capital city, Poland. We didn't have any Polish New Testaments. We had never had a need for Polish language scriptures because we had no outlet for them. So the first Bibles we began to place in the hotels in downtown Warsaw were English Bibles. Not long after they placed the Bibles in the Holiday Inn in Warsaw, Poland, we received a letter in the international headquarters in Nashville on Warsaw, Poland, Holiday Inn, stationary. Now, they used to put stationary in the hotel rooms in the desk so you could write letters. On that stationary was this. I'm an electronic engineer working far away from home for a long time. 
everything, everything I have ever looked for in my whole life, I have just found in yours, Gideon, Holy Bible. That's the first testimony that I know of, hearing of, from a country behind the former Iron Curtain. September 19th, 1989. One week later, September 29, 1989, God opened the doors to Hungary. I organized a group of Gideons there. Two months later, November 12th, 1989, God opened the doors to Yugoslavia. One month later, December 11th, God opened the door to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union. And the very first group of Gideons in the former Soviet Union was in the country of Moldova, where Chaplain Beaver went in the city of Kishnev, the very first group of Gideons in all of the former Soviet Union. I've been there. I've been right where you've been. There were four Baptist churches in Kishnev, Moldova in 1989, December 11th. Those four pastors were asked to recommend men to become members of the Gideons, to become the very first Gideons ever in the former Soviet Union. Those four pastors came up with nearly a thousand names of men to be Gideons. Well, we, we couldn't use a thousand men to start with. We needed a nucleus. So they handpicked, Brother Harold, 25 Gideons and their wives to be auxiliary members. And the first group of Gideons was organized in Kishnev, Moldova. One month later, on January the 8th of 1990, God opened the doors to East Germany. Now Germany is a unified Germany. Two months later, God opened the doors to Romania. Two months later, God opened the doors to Czechoslovakia and Bulgaria. So here were eight of the nine Iron Curtain countries within a matter of September to June, less than a year's time, in a miraculous way, God had opened the doors to eight countries that had been behind the Iron Curtain. And for all of a sudden, Kevin, we needed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of copies of the Word of God as quickly as we could get them and in languages that we had never, ever distributed before. You had Polish, you had Hungarian, you had Croatian, you had Serbian, you had uh, Slovakian, uh, you had Georgian, you had Moldova, you had... Uh, Romanian, you had uh, Azerbaijan, you had Ukrainian, all these languages, and nowhere to get the Bibles printed. But God was in control. Yes, when God opens the door, He makes the way. Yes. None of those languages had we ever printed before. There were not even films in those days, films to print Bibles. But as God would have it, Three hours from St. Petersburg, Russia, up here in, up here in um, Finland, was a printing press. It was a newspaper printing press. But they wanted to get in the business of printing fine paper books. But they had no business. They had all the equipment. They had all the space. Timber in Norway and Switzerland and Sweden. Timber in that area of the world is huge, massive. All the timber they could ever use. And God led us to this printer, and they began to print for us 500,000 copies of the Word of God every month in all these different languages. All these different languages. And for months and months and months, 500,000 per month. And we had the opportunity to go into these countries and distribute. All of those countries had been denied for over at least 40 years. Some of them, as many as 70 years, had not had an opportunity for the Word of God. Go ye into all the world. Yes. Preach the gospel Amen. to every creature. Let me take you quickly to Moscow, Russia. The Gideons were given the opportunity to go to the university, State University of Moscow, Russia. 
A team of Gideons came from all over the, the Soviet Union to concentrate on this distribution. The largest atheistic university in all of the former Iron Curtain countries, Moscow State University. The Gideons were given opportunity on your behalf to distribute New Testaments to all the professors, all the teachers, an atheistic university. There are going to be so many crowds of people who came, they had to govern and assign students to come to certain places. So they had four buildings, conference room and four buildings. These rooms were massive lecture rooms. And in the period of one week, the Gideons would go, sing Christian songs, preach to them, give out the Word of God. In a period of one week, they gave out 24,400 copies of Russian New Testaments, claiming God's Word would not return unto him void. As I wrap up here, let me take this trip around the world that we've gone in the United States, Venezuela, Senegal, Kenya, now to Poland and those countries and the former Iron Curtain countries. And I want to bring it right back here, right back, right back home. As Chaplain Beaver mentioned, I needed to probably say something about the prison. Seven years ago, the Gideons International uh, in the Lebanon camp were sent a letter from the then chaplain. Um, that was before Chaplain Beaver, Chaplain Fletcher, before Chaplain Shoney. And he was asking for the Gideons to supply them with Christian literature, especially Bibles. Well, we began a process when the former chaplain came, and we began a process, David, where we would go as Gideons the last Sunday of every month and lead in two worship services. And we had a team of about 21 Gideons who went through the four-hour training and background check and certified and all those things you have to do to go into the prison. And we began going the last Sunday of every month. But we had the ultimate desire, Sherry. We wanted to at least, at some point in time, be able to go cell by cell, cell by cell, and offer every inmate a copy of the Word of God. Well, they had a policy at the prison. You cannot offer inmates anything unless you have one for every inmate. 2,600 inmates, the largest male prison in the state of Tennessee. So the Gideons, we began to work towards getting 2,600 copies of the Word of God. It took us quite a while. But finally, in October of 2019, we were given the opportunity to go every Sunday in the month of October, and we would go to two units. First Sunday, two units, the second Sunday, two units, the third Sunday. I think at that time there were seven units. Uh, anyway, the fourth Sunday. And over that period of time, we were able to go cell by cell and offer every inmate a copy of the Word of God. We distributed 1,300. So we had a 50% a acceptance. Some of the inmates already had a Bible. Some of them didn't want anything to do with the Bible. Some of them wanted a Bible, and we were able to give it to them. The second Sunday in October when we went, um, we had an opportunity to be a part of the worship service, and we preached the first service. One of our Gideons, Bill Young, preached that morning. And as we were having the service, and we were sitting over here on this side, I'm looking out over the inmates there in the service that day, and God draws my attention to this one particular inmate back on the third row from the back. He looks like he has the weight of the world on his shoulders. He has a beard that is in dreadlocks. He has long, long hair that's all in dreadlocks. His eyes are sunk back into his head, and he absolutely a horrible-looking individual. And for whatever reason, God drew my attention of all the inmates in there. God drew my attention to him. And I began to pray for him. I prayed for him the whole morning. We had at the end an opportunity. We don't have an altar call, so to speak, but we do have an opportunity. 
any inmate that would like to have prayer or who would like to be mentored or talk to somebody, our six or seven or eight Gideons will line up over here and they can come over and talk to us after the service. I watched this man and he got up. He came all the way down the side. He came all the way across the front. He came over here and he talked to Bill Young who had been preaching that morning. I continued to pray for him, Brother Beaver. And before long, I could see that they had bowed in prayer. And that day, that inmate made a decision to trust Christ as his Lord and Savior. The The next Sunday, we went back again to go cell by cell to two more units. We had a very heavy cart tires, Chaplain Beaver, needed to be pumped up a little more. They were a little little soft, and it was hard, hard pushing these six or seven cases of Bibles with 25 Bibles in a case. And I'm a fairly old man. I don't say I'm old, but I'm fairly. And I'm trying to push this cart all the way from the entrance all the way back to the chapel. It's, it's, I began to perspire a little bit, and I'm pushing. We finally get up to the building that the chapel is in, Open the door, and this inmate who the week before had just made this decision for Christ, he saw me. He said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. He grabbed hold of the cart, and he pushed it all the way down the hallway to the chapel room. Opened the door. He pushed it into the chapel room. He pushed it all the way up to the front of the chapel room. Over here were Chaplain Beaver and Fletcher's office, and here was the cart with all the Bibles right here. Now the service started, the worship service started, and you're talking about singing. I go to the prison to get inspired. I tell you what, they can lift, they can lift you right to the throne of God's mercy and grace. I have the most phenomenal keyboard player, some phenomenal singers, vocalists, They love to harmonize and sing. And I mean, we just worship the Lord. They just take you right to the glory, right to God's heaven's door gate, I tell you. Well, this man that had made this decision for Christ, he wasn't sitting back there, Eric, where you are. He was right here on the front row. We were praising the Lord, and many of them had their hands up praising the Lord. He had his hands up praising the Lord. That, that face, it was so lost and desperate and cold and had the weight of the shoulders, on a world on his shoulders. He had a smile on his face. His eyes were open and sparkling, and he was just praising the Lord, thanking the Lord, praising the Lord. So in one hand, he had his hand up praising the Lord, praising the Lord. In the other hand, he had a Gideon Bible, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. A completely changed person from the Sunday before to this Sunday. Through the effort and help of Chaplain Beaver, of course, COVID hit in early, late 19, early 20, and we just got 1,300 full Bibles in right before COVID. Then the prison went on lockdown. I think we were not able to go for 18 months. We couldn't go. Because of lockdown, we began finally to be able to go back. And before Chaplain Beaver was left there at the prison, he worked very carefully with us. And on November, on, on October 12th and November 9th, this past October and November, we were again able to go to every single cell, Brother Harold. We were able to offer every inmate again a full Bible. 790 were given cell by cell. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You say you don't have the education to do that? We have the greatest time in history. You know, you're not living right now by accident. God puts you here for this day and time to be a witness for him, to give him glory, to bring him glory in your life. You're not here today by accident. God ordains you to be here today. 
Well, if God is in that control, which we believe he is, he's given you a mind, and I've just shared with you today how you can go into 200 countries, how you can distribute the word of God in 110 different languages for one purpose, and that's to win people to Jesus at a very inexpensive cost. You do have the money. A dollar and 53 cents now is what we pay for this. That will give it free to any student anywhere in the world Amen. in their language, Amen. mostly. Five dollars, we'll put a Bible like this in any hotel room anywhere in the world. About two dollars and 75 cents, we'll put a Spanish testament like this, bilingual, English, Spanish in a hospital all throughout South America. Yeah. You do have the money. I said, I don't have the education. God, you know I don't have the money. God, you, I don't have the power to do that. According to Acts 1-8, we do have the power. Yeah. Yeah. After that, ye shall receive the Holy Ghost, yeah. and ye shall receive what? Power? Yeah. And what will that power enable you to do, Beverly? Be my witnesses. That's right. Where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. We do have the knowledge. We do have the money. We do have the power. Amen. Jesus says, all power, all power, Jesus says, is given to me in heaven and in earth. Yes. And then he says, ye, each one of us who profess the name of Jesus, ye shall receive power. Yes. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You have a card display back there. I put a brand new card display back there with brand new cards. But throughout the year, you don't have to wait till Gideon comes and speaks. I hope we can do this one time every year, Brother Harold. We have cards back there you can use in memory, in honor, thinking of you. Cards free of charge. We as Gideons pay for these out of our own pockets. We make them available to you. You have a friend or a family member or someone who passes away, why not give them Bibles in their memory? You have a, maybe you want to do something special for Brother Harold and his wife. What better way could you honor them than by giving Bibles Amen. in their honor? You know? Thank you so much for your prayer support, for your partnership. To God be the glory. May many come to know Christ as their Savior and Lord. Through the ministry of amazing grace and through the partnership with the Gideons International. Amen. God bless Praise you. <clears throat> hey, wasn't that good? Amen. Oh, yeah.